Hello everybody. I am back with day four of the Holiday Sewing Challenge. I'm Jessica from Chambray Blue Sewing and I'm glad you're here. This is, as I said, the fourth day of the challenge. So, so far we have made the last few days we've made a t-shirt. Day one was the basic t-shirt with an applique. I didn't do an applique on my shirt, but it's supposed to have an applique on it, okay? There's also a cut file for a Cricut Maker or a Silhouette. You can use heat transfer vinyl to transfer an image onto the front of the shirt. All of that is available in my shop. If you haven't um, gotten the downloads yet, be sure and do that. They're still free um, from now until who knows when. I don't know. I have decided. But anyhow. That's the first day was the shirt. Second day was the pajama pants. This is a really fun, simple pattern. It's a one piece pant, which means it has one seam at center front, one seam at center back, and it's all one continuous piece of fabric, which means it's a lot less sewing and it's really fast and easy to make. So that was day two. Day three, yesterday we made the eye mask and the hair scrunchie to go with it. So today we are making the gift bag. So fun story, these gift bags were once used by um, the Japanese people to bring gifts to their imperial uh, militia. So the gifts of encouragement were in these bags. And I think this year, more than any other year, in 2020, we need encouragement. So think about this as a sack that you can put gifts of encouragement in for whoever you're giving it to this holiday season. The first version I made, um, actually I've made several of these, so this is really the second version, was in the plaid fabric. And this one I used to self fabric both on the inside and the outside. It's really a reversible bag. So you could, you know, turn it, the other way around if you had contrasting fabrics. And when I made my today, my sample for today, that's what I decided to do. So I'm out of my green flannel, so I pulled out some other um, cotton wovens that I had. This is what the bag looks like. It's kind of an odd shape. It's really just a rectangle, and you have one strap that's longer than the other. So I'll tell you more about how that works, but uh, I used two different fabrics for this project. And then, of course, it's easy to slip the strap through the shorter end and it closes itself up. It's really kind of an ingenious, simple design. So if you wanted to, you could make the strap longer and make it a crossbody bag. Um, you could definitely do that. I could even see it being made wider and deeper, maybe for a grocery sack. It would be easy to carry groceries uh, home from the store if you're um, in an area where you can't use plastic bags. So let's get started. So for my demonstration today I'm using two different fabrics I have a, a knit fabric that's a crushed velvet beautiful shade of blue and I'm using a cotton woven in the floral print for my inside so directions on how to cut this odd shape are in the PDF download it's in the comments of this post there is, um, all the other patterns actually are on my website, as I mentioned before, and uh, you can grab this one there too. So to start out with, we're just going to use a straight stitch on the sewing machine with an all-purpose thread and um, needle size. I'm using an 11 needle on mine, and we're going to sew right sides together. I'm going to start with the lining. We're going to sew these two short edges on the lining pieces first. Just going to use a straight stitch. The stitch length will be 3.0. And make sure and uh, let me know where you're watching from. Yesterday was really fun. We had people from all over the world. It's kind of exciting to see how far video goes. Um, we had someone from South Africa, someone from Canada, 
it's all kinds of different locations. So I'm just using a half inch seam allowance here. That's the one edge. Now I'm going to do the second one here on the shorter side. So you want to give those a little press. If you can, if you want to, you can press the seam open. I usually press my edges to one side. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. So that's the lining. Now we're going to do the outside fabric, and I'm using two really different fabrics so you can tell easily what's what. It's a little confusing when they're the same color. So I'm going to sew the short side again. The top edge. Generally for stretch knits I use um, a small narrow zigzag stitch. For this today I'm just going to use the straight stitch. We'll do some top stitching later that will keep everything from moving around. So other fabrics you might consider using would be um, silk, satin, you could use brocade would be really pretty, um, knits will work, French terry or velour, um, any of those kinds of fabrics would make a great bag, canvas. I am out of fabric, if you can believe that, uh, <laughs> out of cotton fabric anyway, I don't have a whole lot of it left. Okay, so I now have my outside bag stitched the same way as I did the lining. The next step is to put the two pieces together, and it's because the straps are different length, it's kind of awkward to um, lay it out on a flat surface. So I'm just gonna do it here on my lap. You wanna match up the seams with right sides together. And I might just put a couple pins in here. I don't usually use many pins, but we will with this. So the next, we're going to be sewing the inside part of the circle. So that we're going to match the raw edges and the seams on the inside part of the handle. Just put a couple in there. Might not be a bad idea to use a bit of stay stitching around this curve, especially if your fabric is very stretchy. Um, I'm just gonna hope for the best, we'll see. <laughs> this could be the day where everything goes south, we'll see. All right, if my seams match up, I think I'll be good. All right, and I'm going to remove my arm here so it's easier to sew. Now I'm going to sew around this inch side edge with the half inch seam allowance all the way around. Make sure you don't sew over your pins. Pull your pins out. They will break needles. They will break machines. Um, clips are a good idea because you don't run those over. And I'm just lining the edges up as I go, working my way around.
I'd love to know what else you're sew sewing for holidays. Uh, I had somebody message me telling about what they're doing this year. I think a lot of people are going to be making homemade gifts. And uh, if you have any other ideas as to what you're making, I'd love to share those with the group. Help someone else out. Okay. Kind of helps to put your hand inside here so you can make sure that the bottom layer is flat, that you don't have wrinkles in it. No one wants to go back and rip things out if it didn't work. Couldn't see what the problem was. Okay, almost there. And it's working out pretty good. I was a little bit worried. I wasn't quite sure if the stretchy velvet was going to give me a problem working it in uh, next to the woven fabric, but it seems to be okay. <sighs> Bobbin thread low. Ugh. I've been sewing all week and I haven't had to change my bobbin, and I didn't think of that. All right, folks, quick uh, install of a new bobbin here. No one else has this problem ever, I'm sure, right? Happens to all of us. Okay. Usually I make a couple of bobbins in the thread that I'm using before I even start, and I didn't do that. So that's what happens when you don't plan ahead. There we go. Looking pretty good. So next thing we're going to do is trim this seam down to a quarter of an inch. It's just easier for turning. And we will also put some notches in it where the curve is. So I'm not going to trim the whole thing for you, but I just go along with the scissors and cut that seam allowance kind of in half, just gives the fabric more room to move, especially where that curve is. It'll be less bulky. Okay, I turned about half of mine just to get the idea. So that's about how it should be. Then I'm going to go in here with the tip of my scissors and make little clips all along this curved edge, about a half inch apart. You want to clip close to the stitching but not go through the stitching. You're going to do that just on the curved part of the design, you don't have to do it on the straight areas. It's just where that curve is that it needs some help to turn properly. 
Otherwise, you'll get pulls on the right side. That's pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to turn it right side out. I shouldn't say right side out. Wrong sides together. Wrong sides together. From here, you probably want to give it a bit of pressing. Okay, I'm going to skip the pressing because we're live and no one wants to see that. You're going to press that and get your edges to kind of line up. Kind of just press the whole piece in place. And one thing to remember with this kind of uh, fabric with the velvet, it doesn't do well with pressing. So if you're going to press it, press it right along the edge where the seam is. Try not to press too much on the face of the fabric. It'll show marks, uh, especially if you're using a velvet with a very high pile. This is crushed velvet. It's a little bit different. It's not quite as obvious, but just be aware, especially this is polyester too, um, doesn't do well with very hot irons. Okay, so that's the first part of it. Now, it sort of gets complicated. And it's really not complicated, but if you don't have an idea of how the bag is supposed to work, it can be confusing. So you want to think the inside of the bag is going to be clean finished. And the only way to do that is to sew the same fabrics together. So I can't sew the velvet and the cotton together or we'll have a seam on the inside, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but we're trying to make it a gift um, that's reversible. So from here, I'm going to put the long, or I shouldn't say long, the short edge of the big part of the fabric together with the one on the other side. And we're going to do right sides together, like I mentioned. And you don't want to get it twisted, so you kind of got to be careful. If you hold it up like this, you can kind of see it's starting to look like the bag. So we're going to put these edges together. There's a notch uh, that I made on the side here where the handle begins. So I'm going to start sewing at the notch all the way down to the corner, across the bottom, and then up the other side to the other notch. I'll just use the same straight stitch, the same half inch seam allowance. When you get to the corner, good trick for nice corners is to stop a couple stitches before the point and take one stitch at a diagonal. So you're going up to the corner, you're going to take one stitch across and then continue to the other side. And that gives you a nice flat corner, makes it look really nice when it's turned. I learned that in seventh grade home ec, if you can believe that, way back when. Turn one stitch, and then the other side. So up to the knot. And in order to get that corner to have a nice shape, we have to cut close to the stitching with a pair of scissors, but not through it. You're going to cut that extra fabric off. And then you want to cut the side pieces just a little bit as well so that you get a nice 
shape there. We'll do the same on the other side. Okay. So then, I'll show you what it looks like. You can press this as well as you go. And in order to get those corners to really pull out, there's a couple things you can do. You can use an object on the inside of the fabric with like a pencil uh, with an eraser. Um, it's a good way to kind of poke those corners out a little bit. Or you can take a pin and just pull the fabric out from the right side so you get a nice point. And again, I learned that at seventh grade home ec. So no big uh, <laughs> exciting technology here. Okay, so there's that. And give it a good press and you'll have that shape. So now I have to sew what is really the right side of my bag the same way. We're gonna find the bottom of it. So from the notch on one side, all the way around to the notch on the other side. We're almost there, guys. It's pretty quick. Of course, I forgot to put the notch in this one. Hmm. All right, well, we'll just take a gander. There we go. Same method, take a stitch across the corner, turn the edge. You know, if you made this bag with uh, all knit fabrics, you could probably um, just use a serger too. You wouldn't even have to single nail it. the other side now this is where it gets a little confusing because you have a lot of fabric um, sort of hanging out the side here but it all works in the long run so bear with me kind of like the burrito method I guess you could say And since I forgot to put my notches in, I just want to make sure I've got it in the right spot. All right. We will trim this corner, same as before. Cut away the extra fabric. I have seen versions of this bag that are rounded instead of squared off. So you could change the design a little bit and make it sort of a, a rounded shape on the bottom of the bag too and you wouldn't have to do that. But anyway, now we're gonna turn this one right side out. You're pulling it back through the straps because we haven't sewn the rest of the straps yet. You're going to put one inside the other. And 
you an idea of where we are on things. There we go. It's starting to look like a bag, right? Um, and if this was pressed, it would be laying much better, but uh, I didn't turn my iron on. So, okay. So you want to press those, make sure that they are nice and flat. The last part of the bag is to sew the opening here. So you want to match up your seams on the straps. Put a pin in there for now. And then we're going to tuck the fabric inside about a half an inch to make uh, the hem on both pieces and you're going to pin that together and then we're going to stitch it, top stitch it. If this one is a little bit trickier because it's the smaller of the two, the large side is always easier to do. So I'm showing you this one. You just fold them in place. Now, when you get to the bottom part of that strap opening, this part here, that's a stress point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a tack there that will keep this seam from ripping because you know with the pulling of this opening, it might uh, rip that seam open and your bag will wear better if you have it tacked shut. So I'm not going to do every step of this. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. But you can see on this bag how nice and clean that looks. With the two layers together, all I did was tuck in the seam allowances and then stitch around the opening with um, an eighth of an inch top stitch all the way around and tacked it at the very bottom. So let's talk a little bit about what a tack is. So the tacks, some machines have a tack function. My machine does. I have a Husqvarna, and just looking at it, it's under utility stitches. Um, there's a short tack and a long tack, and basically it's a row of stitches. It can be straight stitches or zigzag stitches that are quite small, usually about a quarter of an inch long or for a short one or a half an inch long for a longer tack. And it's just really helpful to strengthen parts of garment um, that get a lot of stress. So for example, men's shirts have tacks at the placket, at the um, side where the, the tails are of the shirt, right there, it's easy to you know, rip those and the tacks keep things from getting ripped. I also use tacks for serging. Um, when I'm done with serging something, I take the tail and of the serger thread and I pull it back towards the seam and then I tack it. So my machine is quick and easy to do a tack on. Here, I will show you that. Um, if you don't have a tack function, it's just going back and forth a little bit, some straight stitches, or um, you can use a zigzag stitch as well. And it's kind of a snug fit, you can fit it around your arm of your machine. So generally when I do this, I start with the tack first and then do the top stitching, just because that way it just holds those two seams right where I want them and they don't get, um, they don't move as I'm sewing. So on my machine, I just uh, push the start button and it'll make the tack for me. cuts the threads and you can trim the threads a little closer. And then I would do the top stitching around the opening. So once you've done that and given it good press, you need to do uh, both sides. Okay, so you have raw edges on both sides of the, uh, I keep calling them sleeves. They're not sleeves, but they're straps. Um, get those raw edges taken care of. Then 
I would come back and top stitch around the middle of this opening too. You can see how this fabric is sort of just rolling toward the um, other side of the bag, which I don't really want to see that. So I would just do a little top stitching there and that would hold it in place as well. And when it's finished, it's completely invisible. You, you don't know what side had the raw edges and what side was the finished edge. It, it really doesn't show at all. So another fun uh, thing you could do, you could put a little tag inside. You could even stitch a little pocket in there if you wanted to, um, depending on what your needs are for your bag. And that's it. Simple project. It really is not complicated. Um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave them in the chat. I will answer them as soon as I can. Uh, your gift set should fit in this bag. I tried it out and all my items fit in here other than the robe. Ta-da! There's the robe. Let's talk about that. So the robe is the one item in this holiday gift set that I'm not able to offer as a free pattern because it took a long time to develop it. Uh, that being said, um, it's only $8. So it's not expensive. But if you're looking to do the have a little extra something for someone special, this is a great add-on to the gift set. It is not that difficult to sew. Um, again, you can make it in a variety of fabrics. I've made it in satin, a, a satin jacquard. I've made it in um, cotton flannel. I have uh, one made out of quilting cotton. You could use a knit fabric, um, all kinds of things. You could use fleece, um, any number of fabrics for that. I am thinking about doing another sew along, sewing that robe. Um, I'm hoping it'll be next week. Not sure what my schedule is. It'll be next week or the week after, but sometime in the next couple of weeks, I will show you how to sew that robe live here on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and where am I? YouTube. <laughs> All three. Um, so that's the next um, next thing that'll be coming up, and I would love to see what you make. I realize if you're making some of these things as gifts, you can't necessarily can't um, post, you know, somebody's gift items all over the internet. But um, if you have a little sneak peek somewhere, I'd love to see it or send me an email or something. Uh, I'd love to see the things that you're creating. So if you have any other ideas for things you'd like to see me do or demonstrate um, or so, please let me know. I'm always open to suggestions and uh, looking forward to serving you in the best way that I can. So that's it for today. I appreciate you watching. And uh, as before, you can catch the other videos on the replay on YouTube or my Facebook page um, if you missed those. Okay. You guys have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody.